So one of the things I'm always telling people about working with dreams is that things become obvious. The decision process really goes away where you have to sit down and weigh up this and that and all these things. When you work with your dreams, they inform you away in a way that it makes things obvious. So I want to unpack that a bit, but probably the best way to do that is to start off with a dream. And this dream that I'm going to read to you in a minute is from a guy who is in his 50s in what we used to call the wheelhouse of his career in the sense that he's achieved a certain level and, and financially he's quite well off and he's absolutely miserable. Um, and early on in the process of working, uh, he had this dream. <clears throat> I'm at work. <clears throat> I've been told that I'm going to have a new assignment where I will be in charge of all the finances for a very important project. I don't really know anything about finances, but I don't say anything and I accept the job. I go into a long, oblong room. I think that this is where the work is going to be done. There's a man sitting at the table. He tells me that he's just been fired, but he doesn't know why. He seems to be trying to collect himself and then he gets up and leaves. There's another man in the corner who I think is the boss. He seems to be engaged in some work and I don't want to interrupt him. Another man comes in the room and goes over to him and my sense is that he's suggesting that they do something that is unethical or illegal. The man who is the boss shrugs and goes back to work and the other man leaves. I become aware that if I keep my head down and just do the finances in a way that doesn't say much of anything, I might not only survive, but I might even rise in the organization. And then I realize that I have no interest in that. I just want to leave the room too. Okay, kind of obvious, right? What's happening is that his heart or his imagination is informing his head about a conclusion that he logically came to, that he understood how he felt and kind of came to this conclusion. But when you tell yourself through your dreams, it becomes pretty much inescapable. But what we have to notice is about, about this dream is that it doesn't tell him where he's going or what he's gonna do, it just tells him what he's not gonna do. And we often start there, right? We start from, I don't want this, this sucks, right? And, and there's a lot of sort of galvanizing that goes on around that. And usually what happens in the dream world is we start to get hints. We start to get hints about the direction that would be more fulfilling. And often those hints do not come in any logical form. The initial thing that happens is it becomes increasingly difficult to betray yourself. In other words, it becomes increasingly difficult to sort of go to work, collect a big paycheck, sit in the office with the title, and I have nothing against any of that if it works for you, if that's the thing in your life that you need to be doing. But when it isn't, it becomes more and more intolerable. So what do you do? Well, <clears throat> things become obvious when you trust yourself. Now, that's a hackneyed phrase, right? We've all heard about that, trust yourself. We have to look at the idea of trust in our society today. There is virtually none. We don't trust much of anything. We don't trust medicine. There are people who have a position about vaccines. There are other people who have a position about Western medicine the judicial system, we could go on and on and on. But increasingly, there are all kinds of parties out there that are demonstrating information and sharing information that causes us to mistrust pretty much everything. That's this trust, okay? That's this idea that we're trying to figure out something that cannot be figured out. The only thing you can do is experience who you are. Okay, a way to think about this is a 24 hour period in your life. You're awake and you go to sleep. Now when you're awake, your ego is in charge and you can navigate your life. You can even make some things happen as we say, right? You can, you can behave in a way that you will know that will result in a certain behavior or a certain result. When you go to, go to sleep, Dreams happen to you. You don't have any control. You've given that up in the service of your imagination. Now your imagination is in charge. And your imagination is showing you, nine times out of 10, a belief system that isn't working for you. And it will show it to you over and over and over 
to the point where you will just feel like, why am I having this dream again? I, you know, I got it. You don't quite have it yet. And that's why you keep getting these dreams that have the same kind of message in them. But the idea here that is important to understand is that dreams happen to you. Okay. So you go through this sort of yin and yang experience every single day of your life. This idea that you will trust in something you don't understand. And the whole process of dreaming the obvious, of understanding what is obvious for you, is allowing that dialogue to take place. Now, we have been driven a little bit crazy in our culture, and I've talked about this before, where the dream becomes the thing. Oh, I dreamt this and therefore blah, blah. No, 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 no. You want a conversation between the two, okay? You want your dream well to inform your cognitive world. And in your cognitive world, you want to go out and get some experience that then feeds back into your dream world. They are not separate entities. They are part of your experience altogether. So the obvious sometimes is not so pleasant. The obvious forces you to look at an identity that you have that may not serve you anymore. And now I want to spend a minute or two on this idea of letting go because that's another idea that is out there in the culture that sometimes gets a little bit half-baked, okay? You cannot let go of something whose fundamental nature you don't honor. So what does that mean? Let's take this guy. He worked very hard for, what, 30 odd years of his life to get to where he is. And in working very hard, he accumulated a lot of skill and a lot of information. He traveled around the world. He's had experience raising his kids. He's got a long-term relationship that he values very much with his wife. So all of those experiences got him to this place where he's sitting down and telling me his dreams, right? And to pretend that, oh, he's just in the moment now and that's all that matters and he's going to let go of all that stuff doesn't make any sense. It's not true. And I think one of the things that happens is we don't honor what got us here. Okay. It's like we forget the people, you know, that got us here. And just because that structure or that way of thinking doesn't serve us anymore, doesn't mean that we reject all of it. Okay. We understand ourselves in the context of how we got to where we are. That's really critical. Because if you just reject everything and decide, okay, from now on, I'm going to be this other person, it's not going to work. You know, it's not going to work at all. The only way things become obvious is when they're based on the experience that you've already had in your life. And I can certainly tell you six dozen stories about how that's happened to me. And you can tell your stories to me because that's how we learn. That's how we become more of who we are. So one of the things that happens when you start to pay attention to this experience that you have every day of your life, you may not remember them every night, but let's say you remember your dreams two, three, four times a week, okay? That's part of a dialogue that's going on. Once you start that dialogue, you're in. It becomes very difficult to stop. And that's what's interesting about my practice. Every now and then I will come across somebody, we'll do an, an initial six week intensive, which is a whole other conversation. But the idea there is to really surface the kind of thing that I illustrated in this dream, right? Every now and then somebody will go through that and they go, yep, okay, I see that. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna stop. Well, there's two reasons for that. One is, hesitation, which is something I've talked about before. There's a video on that if you want to take a look. Um, where literally, you have to take a breath. You have to kind of orient yourself and you have to look at the infrastructure you've already built, okay? Because you wouldn't have gotten to start working with your dreams if you hadn't begun to set some things up. So hesitation is okay. The other thing that happens with people, though, is they look at it and they go, actually, no, I like the misery I got. I'm good. Okay. And that may sound odd, but misery is familiar. You know, we know what it is. We know how it feels. There are not going to be any surprises because it kind of sucks. 
And, you know, what I always think is, well, okay, maybe this is not the path for them, that maybe they find something else. Maybe that's my optimistic nature. Um, but, you know, we always do find that thing in human history where somebody had an opportunity that they could have stepped into and they stop and they won't. And that's what that is. If you do step into it, what you are signing up for is an understanding that there's going to be a dance, that you are going to be constantly in a state of understanding something from your heart and manifesting it through your head and then understanding it through your heart and then understanding it in your gut and then understanding it in your head again. It's a dynamic. It's a dance. We keep thinking that there's a stasis somewhere that, Jesus, if we could just get our act together, then everything will be okay. No, the whole point is the act is an actor in a play. You're acting. It's not a stasis situation. One last thing. How do you know how to trust? How do you know how to trust yourself? Okay. Well, one way could be this. I'm convinced that all I really do in my work is remind people of what they already know. That's what I do. I remind you. You already know this. And there's a value in that in the sense that I'm a witness. I'm another human being, and I hear you, and I listen to you, and I say back to you, well, this is what you're saying, right? So <clears throat> in being reminded, that can give you confidence and trust in who you are. If what I feed back to you doesn't remind you of anything, <laughs> I'm the wrong guy. I'm not the guy you, you should be talking to, okay? And I think that's another, that's like the third thing I want to say, is that many times in order to try to achieve what I'm calling the obvious, we sign up for somebody else's stuff, okay? We do it all the time. You know, if we have a religious affiliation, affiliation, we have political affiliation, we have a philosophical affiliation, we're usually saying, yeah, well, that, I read that guy and that guy's stuff or that woman's stuff, that made sense. And so that's good with me. As far as it goes, that's fine. Except you got to make it your own. Except all they're doing is reminding you. That's why you have an affinity to them. When you refuse to understand that you're being reminded when you want to give all your sovereignty to someone else, that's when you're stuck with making decisions again because you have no internal guidance system. So, went around the block a couple of times in this talk, but I think the thing I want to, I want you to, to leave you with is there is a sense that you have when you know you are pursuing what you need to do, okay? And the doing doesn't come out of some calculation up here. The doing comes out of what you begin to feel is very obvious, sometimes very painful, but very obvious. So that's what I wish for you this week, that you come across the obvious.